Darth Vader never liked the Inquisitors. In fact, the very first time he met the Grand Inquisitor, he nearly killed him with a swing of his crimson lightsaber. If it weren't for Emperor Palpatine's sudden appearance, then the Powan Dark Jedi would have likely died just a few days after Darth Vader returned to Coruscant with his new, freshly bled kyber crystal. But that wouldn't be the last time former Jedi Knight Anakin Skywalker would try to kill an Inquisitor. Once, after murdering one of the final members of the Jedi High Council, Vader decided to clean house. He turned his attention to a pair of Inquisitors and decided that he would kill them as an example to the others. Who were they? And why did Vader decide to take their lives? We'll dive into that today. When we look at the historical records, it's not surprising to find that most information about the Inquisitors has been redacted or deleted entirely. We don't even know the names for most of the Inquisitors. All we know is that they were former Jedi that were taken, at least most of them, who were tortured and transformed into agents that served their two Sith Lords, Palpatine and Vader. And again, not as Sith, just Dark Jedi, users of the dark side. Among the group, the two we'll spend today talking about didn't even receive a title. As you know, the members of the Dark Jedi Order were given new names. There was the Grand Inquisitor, the Second Sister, Third Sister, Fifth Brother, Ninth Sister, and many more. But we never actually receive a name for these two in particular. The few records only refers to them based on their appearance. The male one is a Twi'lek, and his romantic partner was a humanoid with bright red skin. And unlike several other Inquisitors, like Proset Dibs, we don't even know what position these two mysterious Dark Jedi held in the Jedi Order before it fell. In the years following Darth Sidious's ascendancy to Emperor, this Twi'lek Dark Jedi and his red-skinned companion probably joined Darth Vader and the other Inquisitors on missions across the galaxy. Although they didn't appear in his invasion of Mon Cala, they popped up several months later during the hunt for the Zabrak Jedi Master, Eeth Koth. You guys might remember him from the Marvel comics, which I covered and brought to life many years ago. During their campaign, Darth Vader single-handedly dueled the former Jedi High Council member, while the other members of the Inquisitors hunted down Koth's wife. Now at one point, the red-skinned female Inquisitor was alone with the Jedi spouse, and something went wrong. The Inquisitor felt compassion. Perhaps due to her relationship with the Twi'lek, the Red Inquisitor would understand just how terrified Ethkoth's wife was. In that moment, the Red Inquisitor allowed the woman and her infant child to escape. That choice would come back to haunt her only a few days later. As the Red Inquisitor watched the frightened mother and her crying baby board a transport, another Inquisitor rounded a corner just in time to see the act of mercy. Fearing that her kindness would be reported to Vader, the Red Inquisitor had no choice but to cover up her lapse in judgment. And instead of letting Eeth Koth's family go away peacefully, the Dark Jedi used the Force to rip the infant away and levitated her to the ground. But it was too little, too late. By the time the Imperial Detachment returned to course to celebrate the success of their latest Jedi hunt, Darth Vader had heard of the Red Inquisitor's actions, and he was furious. Now, as we already know, Vader hated the Inquisitors. He could never understand how Palpatine allowed them to live, since there were only ever supposed to be two Sith. Even though Sidious tried to assuage Vader's concerns and tell him that the Inquisitors were merely their puppets, Vader couldn't shake the feeling that the Dark Jedi assassins were always waiting for an opportunity to strike so that they could take his job. Which, funny enough, we saw in Kenobi with Reva. Now that Vader had an excuse that the red-skinned Inquisitor had shown mercy, he could kill one of his potential rivals. But there was more. Vader smartly deduced that the Twi'lek was in love with the Red Inquisitor, which was another crime punishable by death. In Vader's opinion, the entire Inquisitoris owed their allegiance to Palpatine, and if any of them began romantic relationships with another, that would constitute treason. So, in the midst of the Inquisitor's private party, Darth Vader ignited his red lightsaber and swung out at the Twi'lek and his girlfriend. The two Inquisitors tried to run away, at first. Their flight across the skyscapes of Coruscant left a trail of destruction in their wake. As Vader rode aboard Imperial airspeeders looking for the runways, the Dark Jedi took their shot. They launched their double-bladed lightsabers at Vader's ship and cut it into three pieces. The Sith Lord, of course, survived, but as the debris of his airspeeder struck the ground, he accidentally killed one of Palpatine's most cherished senators, something he would be punished for later. As the fight progressed, the Inquisitors tried to use their combined strength in the Force to telekinetically throw ships at Vader, hoping the collision would kill him. But Vader simply caught the speeders in mid-air and threw them back at his opponents. 
Eventually, all three of them ended up landing on the same balcony on a nearby building. Vader was kneeling on the floor and taking a moment to catch his breath. In those few seconds, the Twi'lek Inquisitor foolishly believed that he had defeated the Sith Lord. As would often happen, Vader's opponents wrongly thought they had the upper hand, when only the opposite was true. As they walked up to their commander and prepared to plunge their lightsabers through his cyborg suit, Vader simply shoved a single hand in the air. With that gesture, he froze both the Inquisitors in place. Unable to move, their eyes filled with terror as they realized what was about to happen. With a sudden telekinetic turn, Vader rotated the lovers so that they faced each other, before bending their arms and forcing their blades to plunge into each other's chests. The unnamed Inquisitors quickly died on the balcony on that day. Much like the other members of their order, their ultimate legacy was that of terror. Had they been given more time and successfully managed to run away from Coruscant, they might have redeemed themselves. Who knows? They could have even had children of their own, the same way Master Eeth Koth did. Perhaps they would have helped other runaway Jedi or other members of the Inquisitors who wanted to leave. But instead, Vader deduced their treachery before they even had a chance to escape. And so they died just like any enemy of the Empire would. And I gotta say, the way they died is pretty dark and, you know, even for Vader. But there is a bit of a comedic ending to their fate, I suppose, from Vader's point of view. Well, if you love each other so much, then I guess this is the best way for you guys to go by ending each other's lives. I hope you enjoyed this video. This is a bit of a highlight of a previous comic that I covered many years ago, and I thought it was pretty interesting and kind of funny. Hope you guys have a great day. Leave a like on this video if you enjoyed it, and I will see you all in the next episode on Star Wars Theory. Until then, remember, the Force will be with you, always.